What's up everyone? Uh, I'm going to be reviewing the new Halloween movie. That's right. The new Halloween movie which stars Jamie Lee Curtis. And um, you know that was huge news when that was announced I think about a year ago that she would return to the franchise and that they would be making a direct sequel to the original uh, 1978 film and also got the original director John Carpenter involved as a producer. Um, so there's been a lot of anticipation building for this. I mean, Halloween is, is just the, 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 you know, slasher film that just started slasher films, but also just, I mean, it, it, it's essential to what makes, you know, the modern horror film. So, you know, the, this is a huge deal. Um, and like I said, I, I was, you know, I'm myself, a huge Halloween fan, um, you know, and a huge John Carpenter fan as well. So him being involved really means something a lot to the fans, I think. <clears throat> also, um, David Gordon Green directed this. He did e the show Eastbound and Down. I'm not that familiar with it. That show stars Danny McBride, which I am familiar with from things like Pineapple Express. You know, he's mainly a comedy guy. Uh, both of the David Gordon Green and Danny McBride apparently are. And, um, you know, so it was kind of interesting to see what was going to happen uh, with all that being a big part of the, the making process. Um, you know, and this one is a direct sequel to the original 1978 film. Um, so, you know, it was kind of like... Wow, you know, uh, what are they going to do here? And, um, you know, I won't spoil anything, but basically it follows Jimmy Lee Curtis as Laurie Strode, uh, who is very traumatized from 40 years ago, and she now has a daughter and a granddaughter, uh, and it follows, you know, kind of that, that uh, generation, it seems, the, all three generations. More or less the granddaughter and Jamie Lee. The mother, however, there is, you know, sort of a, a story about how she was uh, kind of a little bit abused from Jamie because she was so paranoid. Uh, so, you know, they get into that a little bit in the story and, and it's part of it. Um, but, yeah, uh, you know, so Michael Myers has basically been captive, uh, you know, kept in a mental asylum for the last 40 years, uh, and these, you know, these, um, these sort of journalists are, uh, tempted to figure out why Michael Myers doesn't talk and, and why, you know, he is the way he is and why he hasn't said anything and why he's done what he's done. So they, they, they bring the mask to him and they try to get him to talk. And then, in the midst of transporting him to different hospitals on a bus, the bus crashes, Michael Myers escapes, he's back in Haddonfield on Halloween night. So that's the gist of the story. Um, now how, how I feel about the movie, I think overall I, I, I enjoyed it and it's definitely like a cut above a lot of horror films right now that are being made or that were made in the last few years to decades. Um, also, uh, you know, it, it really um, plays on on how the original one was stylistically, visually. Uh, you got Carpenter and his son Cody coming back to do the music, even. So that was like they really stayed true to that kind of like formula and and just sort of essence, very much so in this film. Uh, and it's even pl paced a lot like an older film in parts. I won't say it plays like an old film, but it definitely has those parts where they really went back to the old school kind of like slow hanging on a scene stuff. Um, you know, and, and the kills are, are pretty brutal in this. A lot of them are, are homages to other Halloween films. But, you know, it's not like a total ripoff. And there is some... There's some brutalness to the Michael Myers killing in this. That's pretty awesome. Um, what I did have, and, and let me say this: the Jamie Lee Curtis, uh, Laurie Strode 
character was handled very, very well in this. Jamie Lee kills it. And she, and, and they really kind of, when they were focusing on her character, I think the movie was almost flawless and, and pretty damn awesome the way they handled that. It's everything else that I kind of had a little bit of problem with. Um, now, being that David Gordon Green and Danny McBride wrote this movie, it was expected that there was going to be, you know, a very comical tone uh, at times. But I think when you see that maybe this, you know, that this is David Gordon Green's first film, horror film, I mean, you can kind of see it. Because, uh, you know, it, it's almost like you can tell what he was trying to do with the, with the comedic tone. You know, the banter he uses between some of these characters is, you know, like a funny thing. And a lot, and as it is in a lot of horror films, and especially like comedy horror films and slasher films, you get that banter that can be kind of lighthearted and jokey because it's trying to set you up for now dread and horror, you know. But with this, the, the comedy seems a little forced, like, yeah, okay. And I think there's a really bad part with a, a small child that started out as a funny character and had funny parts, but they kept kind of like it, you know, kind of pushing that. Like, this is a funny part, right? You know? And you get to the point, again, I'm not going to try to spoil anything here, where... The comedy's trying to happen while um, Michael Myers is, like, in the room trying to kill people. And there's something about that to me where the comedy and horror were not, were not sort of balanced right. And I think there was a balance issue with some of the humor and, and, and the horror. And I found it to be a little irritating or out of place at times. Also, I think the big problem with this film, the biggest problem is that the fact that they didn't acknowledge two. Now, if you don't want to acknowledge everything else, fine. You know, it's almost like that's okay. But I think my problem, my biggest problem is with like, this is just going to acknowledge number one, which I felt like they could have acknowledged the second one as well. Um, you know, and, and the big problem is like, it's so crazy to think like, well, what really did happen after the first one? Like what happened? They just caught him again, you know? So, so there's just that little bit of, you know, it feels like, like they wanted to acknowledge what happens in part two but they just couldn't maybe because John Carpenter wouldn't get on board or something because it's on record that Carpenter just really does not like any of the sequels at all so maybe that has to do with it but it, it there was just that element about it where it's like ugh, it, the whole thing at times does feel a little bit like an excuse you know and some some of the way the scenes are so especially like some of the kills you go this is one big excuse to have Michael Myers killing people. And in a lot of ways, it seems like, in a way, that's what this movie was, was this big excuse where, where you know, things are stretched very thin so we can do this, you know? So to me, it's not 100%, you know, my favorite thing in the world. Um, you know, as a, as a fan, it's just really hard to acknowledge all the other, or not acknowledge the other movies to me. I mean, in a way, I almost felt like they could have even possibly acknowledge H2O because H2O is like a true number three, you know, to the original series. But I don't know. You know, the, like I said, you know, the, I, I'm sort of, I, I think this movie's a must see. I, I by no means hated it, but I think that there was parts about it that I found very frustrating. Um, you know, I, I I can't help it. There's just, you know, I really, really wanted to just full on really love this thing and say this is the best Halloween movie there has been since the original.
but I just can't help but think this is a real big fuck you to part two, which I still like. I still think part two is really good and, and, and sort of like crucial in a way because you really kind of have to acknowledge what is exactly, what happens after Michael Myers isn't found. You know, and this movie just literally goes, well, um, we don't know, we're not going to talk about it, but somehow or another he ended up back where he ended up. I don't know, there's something about that that bothers me, and the fact that, you know, they, they kind of shit on the idea that, that Michael Myers and Jamie Lee are not brother and sister. I, I find that to be good. Yeah, it's a little Empire Strikes Back, but I still think that that was, that was a nice twist to bring things together, and then, you know... I don't know, the, the movie just kind of has a little bit of that in it, like an arrogance of like, this is the real sequel. You know, which, I, I, I'm i sorry, it's an alternate kind of thing. You know, the, the Halloween series is, a, in general, is so screwed up and all over the place. You know, this, this just kind of makes it more confusing. So, you know, with that being said, guys, I really do recommend you go see it. It's cool as hell the way it was executed. The kills, the scenes, they were brutal. Anyway, check out Cucamonga Peak Productions. Hit a subscribe and a like, and I'll catch you guys later. Thanks.